parametric classification. We saw in chapter 3 that using the Bayes rule, we can write the posterior probability of class CIS, the probability of CA conditional X, which is equal to the probability of X conditional CA times the probability of CI, then divided by the probability of X, which is equal to the probability of X conditional CI times the probability of CI, then divided by the summations of the probability of X conditional CK times the probability of CK, and we sum it for OK starting from 1 to capital K, because they are K different classes. And use uh, the discriminant function gi of x that we have discussed before equals to the probability of x conditioning on ci times the probability of ci. Or equivalently, gi of x is equal to log of the probability of x conditioning on ci plus the log of p of ci. And if we can assume that the p of x conditioning on ci are Gaussian, then p of x conditional on ci is equal to 1 over the square root of 2 pi times uh, rho i, then times the exponential of the following, minus x minus mu i to the square divided by 2 times rho i to the square. And uh, now equation 4.20 becomes, previously there are the summations of two log functions. Now it becomes g of x is equal to minus 1 half times log 2 pi minus log rho i minus x minus mu i to the square divided by 2 times rho i to the square, then plus log p of ci. Okay, let us uh, see an example. Assume we are a car company selling k different cars. And for simplicity, let us say that the sole factor that affects a customer's choice is his or her yearly income, which you denote by x. Then P of CI is the proportion of customers who buy car type I. If the yearly income distributions of such customers can be approximated with a Gaussian, then P of X conditioning on CI, the probability that a customer who bought car type I has income X can be taken N of mu I rho I square, where mu I is the mean income of such customers and rho I square is their income variance. When we do not know P of CI and P of X condition on CI, we estimate them from a sample and a plug in their estimates to go to get the estimate for the discriminant function. We are given a sample, X equals to the set X to the T, R to the T, where T is starting from 1 to N, where X is in R, is one dimensional and R is in 0, 1 to the K, such that R I to the K is equal to 1 if X T is in ci and uh, x r i to the t is equal to zero if x t is in ck for all those k which are not i which is not i and for each class separately the estimates of uh, the means and variances are relying on equation 4.8 mi is equal to the summations of x to the t times r i to the t summing for all index t divided by the summations of r to the t summing for index t and uh, as i square is equal to the summations of x to the t minus m i to the square, then times r i to the t, summing for index t, then divided by the summations of r i to the t, summing for all index t. And the estimates for the priors are relying on equation 4.6. Uh, p of c i, p hat of c i, is equal to the summations of r i to the t, summing for index t, then divided by n. Uh, plugging these estimates into equation 4.22, we get uh, g of x is equal to minus one half of times log 2 pi minus log si minus x minus mi to the square divided by 2 times si to the square plus log of p hat of ci. And the first term is a constant and it can be dropped because it is a common in all g i of x if the priorities are equal. The last term can also be dropped. If we can further assume that variances are equal, we can write it as follows. That g of x is equal to minus times x minus mi to the square. And thus we assign x to the class with the nearest mean. So we choose ci if uh, the absolute value of x minus mi 
is equal to the minima taken of the minima of the value of uh, the absolute value of x minus mk, where the minima is taken among all possible k, and with two adjacent classes, the midpoint between the two means is the threshold of the decision, c figure 4.2. That is, g1 of x is equal to g2 of x. Uh, and that is, x minus m1 to the square is equal to x minus m2 to the square. So if we do some uh, algebraic manipulation, we get x is equal to mi plus m1 plus m2, then divided by 2, at the average between m1 and mm2. When the variances are different, there are two thresholds. See figure 4.3, which can be calculated easily, exercise 4. If the priors are different, this has the effect of moving the threshold of decision toward the mean of the less likely class. Here we use the maximum likelihood estimators for the parameters, but if we have some prior information about them, for example for the means, we can use a Bayesian estimate of P of X conditioning on CI with prior on mu I. One note of caution is necessary here. When X is continuous, we should not immediately rush to use Gaussian densities for P of X conditioning on CI. The classification algorithm, that is uh, the threshold points, will be run if the densities are not Gaussian. In a statistical literature, tests exist to check for normal normality, and such a test should be used before assuming normality. In the case of one-dimensional data, the easiest to test is to plot the histogram and uh, to check visually whether the density is bell-shaped, namely unimodal and uh, symmetric around the center. This is the likelihood-based approach to classification, where we use data to estimate the densities separately, calculate posterior densities using Bayes' rule, and then get the discriminant. In later chapters, we discuss the discriminant-based approach where we bypass the estimation of densities and directly estimate uh, the discriminants.